Moses Embry Milner, known far and wide as California Joe, was one of the frontier's colorful characters. Born in Kentucky in 1829, Moses Milner earned the name California Joe when he and his wife traveled to California to prospect for gold in 1850. California Joe was one of those itchy-footed frontiersmen of the Old West and did not seem to stay in any one location very long. He later established a cattle ranch in Oregon, prospected in Idaho and Montana, and over a lifetime of adventures, had been all over the American West. He is best known for his role as a scout for the U.S. military, and for his friendship with George Armstrong Custer and Wild Bill Hickok. Custer had promoted California Joe to Chief of Scouts during the Washita Campaign, but Joe's heavy drinking caused him to be demoted. The year of 1876 was not good to California Joe. His friend Custer had been killed at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, and his friend Wild Bill killed in a saloon in Deadwood. And on October the 29th, California Joe would join his friends. From the New York Herald, New York, New York, November 5th, 1876, Indian Scouts Murdered. Fort Laramie, Wyoming Territory, November 4th, 1876. California Joe, Joseph Milner, an experienced and daring Indian scout who traveled considerably with General Custer, was shot at Red Cloud Agency on Tuesday by Tom Newcomb. Joe was a noted character in his way, and his death is attributed to his reported connection with the killing of John Richard the father of Lewis Richard, one of General Crook's scouts on the Bighorn Expedition. From the Cheyenne Daily Leader, Cheyenne, Wyoming, November 7th, 1876. Latest from Red Cloud. California Joe killed. California Joe was killed here November 1st by a man named Newcomb. The two had already had several shooting bees at one another. Newcomb is in the guardhouse at Camp Robinson. From the Bismarck Weekly Tribune, Bismarck, North Dakota, November 22nd, 1876. Notes and News California Joe was killed a few days ago by a fellow named Newcomb, who is now held under guard at Camp Robinson, near Red Cloud. As can be seen, there was very little press about California Joe's death, and with what little was published, still fewer specific details. Custer's death at the hands of the Sioux and Northern Cheyenne, and Wild Bill's death at the hands of Jack McCall, are well discussed by historians. California Joe's demise seems to be little more than a footnote. Who was this Newcomb, and why was he at odds with California Joe? Little is known about Tom Newcomb. Bad blood existed between Joe and Newcomb because of the murder of a man named John Richard. Evidence pointed to the Sioux as the ones who killed Richard. However, a rumor was spread that California Joe had been behind the murder, a rumor that Joe blamed Tom Newcomb as having started. This animosity between the two came to a head on August the 5th, 1876, in Deadwood. California Joe had just learned about his friend Wild Bill's death from Colorado Charlie, when he saw Newcomb walking by and carrying a Winchester rifle. At the time, it was thought that a group of men had paid Jack McCall to kill Wild Bill, and Joe suspected that Newcomb was part of that gang. Joe wanted to know why Newcomb was carrying a rifle, and an argument between the two ensued. California Joe took the Winchester away and told Newcomb if he ever saw him carrying a gun again in Deadwood, he would shoot him. We know the particulars of California Joe's death from two sources, Dr. Valentine McGillicuddy and a man by the name of Holdout Johnson, both of whom were in the vicinity when California Joe was killed. We learn that California Joe was killed at Fort Robinson, Nebraska, and not at the Red Cloud Agency, like some of the newspapers reported. Dr. McGillicuddy wrote, In the later afternoon of October the 29th, on entering the post traders, I observed California Joe lined up at the bar with a number of men drinking, and while they were doing so, an employee of the post butcher shop, Tom Newcomb by name, entered. There had been bad feeling between himself and Joe for some time, and on observing Joe, he drew his gun. 
California Joe, turning around and observing him, did likewise, which naturally resulted in the crowd scattering. But Joe finally called out, Put up your damn gun, Tom, and come up and have a drink which Newcomb did, and shook hands with Joe. A short time afterwards, I left the traders, accompanied by Joe, who was on his way to the quartermaster's corral. En route, I stopped off at the hospital, Joe remarking on the good times ahead of him, as he was to leave the next morning as scouts with the 4th Cavalry under command of General Ronald McKenzie for the winter expedition to round up the scattered bands of marauding Sioux and Cheyennes who were raiding in the Bighorn country. Half an hour later, while sitting on the porch of the hospital, I heard a shot in the vicinity of the quartermaster's corral, and shortly afterwards, a private rushed up with the information that Joe was shot. And proceeding to the corral, I found Joe dead, lying on his back on the ground on a lower bench below the corral, a ball having passed through his chest from the rear. I ordered the remains taken to the hospital for a post-mortem examination. It appears that Joe was talking to three or four men with his back to the corral, when Newcomb suddenly came around the corner from a point about a hundred feet away with a Winchester rifle, and called out, Look out, boys! They scattered. But before Joe could turn, Newcomb fired. Joe threw up his hand, saying, What is it? Whirled around and dropped to the ground. Holdout Johnson's story corroborates all that Dr. McGillicuddy said, but with some more specific information about California Joe and Tom Newcomb's discussion at the bar at the Post Traders and about the shooting afterwards. We had both been drinking together in the Settlers, and as we were talking, in walked Tom Newcomb. Just as he saw California Joe, he pulled his 44 Colt's revolver out of his holster. Joe, seeing this, made a fast draw and covered Newcomb. Why California Joe did not fire and kill Newcomb has always remained a mystery in my mind, as he had him covered. About an hour later, that error cost him his life. When this gunplay took place, the large crowd naturally got out of the way, and I'd done the same. When California Joe had Newcomb covered, he said, Tom, put up that damned gun and come and have a drink. When Newcomb came up, they both shook hands and had several drinks together and talked about half an hour. The conversation was mostly about the murder of John Richard, the Squaw Man, and it seems their bad feeling towards one another was all settled in a peaceful way. For just as Newcomb was about to leave, he shook hands again with Joe and said, Now, Joe, everything is all right. I noticed particularly Newcomb's actions, and I will say he was partly under the influence of liquor at the time. A few minutes after Newcomb left, Joe went out in company with Dr. McGillicuddy. That was the last time I saw him alive. For in about half an hour, he was shot in the back and instantly killed by Newcomb, who had watched to get the drop on him. Newcomb sneaked up to the quartermaster's corral with a Winchester, and, taking a rest on a wagon wheel, shot a man who, a short time before, had spared his life and shook hands with him. California Joe was murdered in the same fashion as his good friend Wild Bill had been weeks before, killed by a man over a perceived wrong that didn't need to end in bloodshed, shot from the back because to face him would mean his own death. California Joe had died as a civilian, and so Tom Newcomb would need to be tried in state court. Under the law, the military could only hold a civilian temporarily, and after a blizzard postponed officers in traveling to the fort, the fort authorities released Newcomb secretly, as they didn't want him to be lynched and be blamed for it. Newcomb traveled to Deadwood, where he boasted of having killed California Joe, and was arrested by Sheriff Bullock. Newcomb was held for two weeks in jail while an attempt was made to locate California Joe's two sons so that the warrant for Newcomb's arrest could be secured and he be taken to trial. However, too much time passed and Newcomb was released. He then disappeared and his fate remains unknown. California Joe was buried at the Fort Robinson Cemetery but his remains were later moved to the Fort McPherson National Cemetery.